what is up YouTube and welcome back to Bike Hub Japan so this week uh, I went to the track again with my friend Andy on his 2004 Yamaha R1 and I was on my old trusty trusty Katie my 990 Super Duke um, who who is behaving at herself lately which is uh, unusual so hopefully she keeps that up she doesn't spring any new leaks or uh, refuse to start <laughs> but um oh thank you sir thank you so anyway yeah um basically out of the blue uh andy messaged me on the night before and said i'm thinking of going to the track tomorrow do you want to go and i was having a bit of a shitty week and i thought you know what i'll take a mental health day off work and i'll go to the track with him so that is exactly what i did so we got there um on saturday morning i think about 10 minutes before the session was about to start so we were kind of rushing around a bit <coughs> and uh, in the morning i kind of rushed uh getting my bag packed and stuff so i didn't bring any decent audio recording equipment this time so you'll just have to make do with the audio from my helmet so sorry about that um but anyway yeah we got there um as soon as we'd signed on and everything we started adjusting our tire pressures maybe i'm gonna go for 2.210 front 200 rear yeah. 200 rear. 200. two two oh, so i checked the bridgestone website um which has a pdf file like a chart of all the different models of tires they sell with recommended cold tire pressures recommended hot tire pressures all this all this information is there but as mine are the s22r which is the street tire it only lists the cold recommended cold temperature so japan uh we don't use psi over here which is a pain in the ass because we always have to try and calculate that shit in our head but uh we use kpa or kilos whatever you want to call it so uh, I think what Bridgestone recommended was for 31 psi front and 29 psi rear. So I figured that to be uh, 210 kPa front and 200 kPa rear, I think. Uh, so that is basically what we went for. Uh, and he's using the Metzler, uh, I can't remember what model, but they're kind of a, a track focused tyre and his his tire pressure he was actually running a lot higher than i expected a lot higher than me can't remember off the top of my head but um yeah anyway after we'd faffed about with that we got onto the track and did some slow laps I guess we did about um, probably three slow laps just warming everything up and then about five laps at you know our sort of warming up pace and then we came in again to check the tire pressures see uh, how much they changed in those those laps oh yeah I should mention as well that the weather that day the outside temperature was 20 degrees um, I've no idea what the actual track temperature was because it was a really cloudy kind of overcast day so the track temperature probably wasn't um wasn't 20 degrees i don't know um but yeah my pressures had gone up basically about the same front and rear so it went from 210 uh front to about 235 and the rear went from 200 to 235 so the rear was obviously getting hotter than the front but uh, you know that's to be expected because you've got 
all that power and torque going through that through that rear wheel. Um, so yeah, we adjusted the presses back down to uh, what we set them as at cold in the first place, and uh, then went on and did some more laps. Um, now that day there was 20 riders, so uh, we were kind of a bit worried that we we might be the slowest there, and we might be getting in everybody's way. But actually, it turned out we weren't too shabby. Um, there was a couple of people there on brand spanking new CBR 1000 RRR. What is that? What it's called? The really special one that's got all the the really sick Brembo's and the sick suspension and stuff, like a uh, super expensive bike. They were. Uh, Andy reckoned they were gay, but I reckon they were just friends. <laughs> there are two doctors and they bought brand new bikes, brand new leathers, brand new helmets and all that. And they were, they were seriously getting in our way. They were slow as fuck. So that made us uh, feel better, feel a bit better. <laughs> that our super cheap old 2004-2006 model bikes were kicking some brand new fire blade ass. So that was good. Um, and there was a couple of other people. There was one guy on an FZ8 who wasn't exactly slow, but he was just a fraction slower than me. So I managed to overtake a few people. Um, but basically we were still getting our ass handed to us by dudes on little 250s, which is kind of annoying, but, but fun nonetheless. Um, yeah, so I, I started to do uh, sort of consistent one minute seven laps I think or one minute six late 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 six second laps um, and the first time I rode my bike there uh, a couple of weeks ago I got a one minute 5.3 so I thought oh, I, I should be able to get better times than, than that but I wasn't really pushing it so much at first because um, there was a kind of a, a freaky noise that was kind of kind of getting on my nerves and, and also at the same time making me a bit worried now I was getting my knee down everywhere, obviously, but combined with the, the, the knee slider sound, which is kind of, you know, easily recognisable because it's, you know, uh, plastic on tarmac, there was this other noise that sounded more metallic, more like aluminium, and it was freaking me out because I thought maybe I was getting my footrest down or my pegs down. So I pitted in again to find out what the problem was, and the only thing that I could actually see was that my side stand um, was scratching down which just didn't make any sense to me except unless if I was really really leaning the bike too much so next time I go I want to work a bit more on my body position because I think I could be leaning the bike over too much and you know if I carry on like that eventually I'm going to run out of contact patch and I'm going to fall off so we'll work on that um, but yeah uh, aside from that uh, after I checked that and figured, ah, well, it's probably just that, let's just be a bit more careful. Um, I consciously tried to hang off the bike a bit more and try to reduce my lean angle a bit. And then I did a one minute four. So I was like super happy with that. Oh yeah, that's uh, a, almost a second off what I got last time, excellent. And then I just decided, all right, let's go a little bit harder. So the next lap out, I did a one minute 3.9. And as soon as I saw that on the uh, timing board, I was like, yeah, let's go even harder. Um, but maybe the, the first uh, three turns, I felt like I was uh, pushing it too hard, like I was, I was gonna, gonna crash if I, if I didn't sort of tow myself in. So I decided it was better, in the interest of safety, I figured it would be better to just, go, just call, it, call it a day. So that's, that's what I did. <laughs> There's a nice view of one of the, uh, the outhouses of the castle. The castle's in there somewhere, you can't exactly see it, but that's just one of like, like I suppose it'd be a gatehouse or an outhouse. So probably someone, some minister of the ancient past lived there with their family or something. Or maybe soldiers are stationed there, I don't know. And there's a nice swan over there as well. Isn't it a pleasant day here in Japan today? Anyway, back to bikes. Um, so yeah. I did my one minute three second point nine and that was enough for me so I, I just pitted in and then Andy carried on doing a few more laps. I think Andy's best time was a one minute six. <coughs> Excuse me, he sent, he sent me a message the other night saying that he's three and a half seconds off me so the challenge is on so I can imagine me and, <laughs> me and Andy are going to be battling each other all over summer to try and get, get the fastest time. But it's all good, it's a bit of friendly rivalry. Um, 
but yeah the only other thing like obviously like i said it's my best ever time and i'm pretty stoked about it and so yeah awesome i'm getting way i'm improving every time i'm getting way way better and then when i watch my video i'm like oh you fucked up there you fucked up there you fucked up there so one thing for sure that i know i've got to get my head around is turn seven eight and nine because i'm just just not getting it right every, almost every single lap uh, on the track there are little cones there a little witch's hats for you australian viewers and it's a, a turn in and a, an exit or a clip you know like a turn in and a clip marker so i know what i should be doing uh, let's go over here because that's a taxi stop so i know what i should be doing but i just cannot get it right every single freaking time i'll show you what my tires look like so the S22Rs that I've got on, yeah, I quite like them. You can see it's, I don't know if you can tell what kind of wear that is. Are there any experts out there? Marcus, what am I doing? What kind of, what can you tell from that? If I come to the rear, yeah. I don't know if anyone can give me any, any feedback on that. Is my throttle too, too violent or not enough throttle or is my rebound not right or whatever? any advice I'm with I'm ready to listen so yeah I think um, next time I gotta work on my body position to reduce the lean angle and also I've got to just get seven eight and turn seven eight and nine right because I'm definitely losing time there and that's that sucks because I'm a perfectionist and I want to get it right there's the entrance to the castle pretty cool probably should go in there for a tour one day if you guys are interested in that um, but yeah like I said it was a very enjoyable day and I hope you enjoyed the little onboard lap of my 1 minute 3.9 so let's roll that as always thank you very much for watching um, looking forward to your comments especially my it seems I've got a trainer an online trainer so Marcus George ex-racer very gut very insightful guy and give me your give me your feedback please I'm waiting so all right guys I'll see you in the next video peace